Hey, so you may already know the different ways we have at Angular to register service with the dependency injector. So there's, first of all, registering directly on the provider's array on the module, and then importing that module to other modules to make the service available there. Or what usually happens nowadays is actually to use just the decorator to add injectable and use the provided in root there to auto-register the service. Now, there are different implications to that and those two methods in general, like especially when it comes to lazy loaded modules and instances of those services you might have potentially in memory. So if you don't know about it, like definitely check out the video, which I'm linking in the description. But today I'm going to look into what the different effects are in the final bundle. Like what happens if you register the service to the provider's array versus using, for instance, the injectable provided in root. So let's check that out. So let's first have a look at the setup here. So we have a simple application that has a data access module with its data service. And that service basically is imported on feature one and feature two. And both of them are lazy loaded. So if I click here, you can see JavaScript is being pulled in and similarly here. Now I want to have a look in this video specifically on the bundle size and what implications there are based on how we register our data service. So let's remove this here as it's not relevant for this video. And first of all, let's have a look at the current setup in terms of the data service registration. So I'm using on purpose just injectable here and I register the service here on a provider's array of my module. And that module in turn is being imported again on the feature one module and as well on feature two module. And that is necessary for making the data service available to these two feature modules such that then in actual components, the data service can be used. Now let's compile this. I'm just using build here without the production build so we can actually read the source that gets produced. And so now if we go to our list folder, what you see here is we have the main bundles and vendor bundles. We have the different modules here in feature one module and feature two module. And now since we have common chunk enabled and you can check out my blog for how to disable that if needed, the common parts between feature one and feature two module, which is our data access model and data service, right, will be compiled into that common chunk. So let's have a look what we have in here. We have the actual data service and we also have the data access model itself. Now, obviously both of them are in here because we use all of them in our app logic. But what happens if we start modifying the source? So assume that we have the data service registered on the data access module, but actually we don't need that service. So assume that we just need to module in those feature one and feature two modules. So let's remove this here. Let's leave the registration here because maybe the data access model in a real world scenario might have more things registered on here, which we are actually using, like other services, for instance. So let's remove them also from the component two here, from feature module two. And that way we get rid of the data service usage. So in general, like we don't use the data service now anymore. Let's again recompile. So if we go up here again in the common chunk, what you will see is we'll still see the data service in here. Although technically that service is not being used by our app. So the only place where we have it is the registration on that data access module. And actually the similar thing is the same thing is when we do it in production. Like if we do a production build and we again go up here, we still have our common script. And if we search for data service, we still see the data service in here. So Angular is not going to actually remove that. So this, however, is quite different if we use the provided in syntax. So if you go in here and we use that syntax, we use the provided in root. And as a result, we can actually remove the registration on our module here. So now the situation is exactly the same. We still use the data access module here in feature one module. So we still import that. We also have the access module here. But since we used to provide it in root, our data service is not being registered anymore and it's not imported anywhere in our application. And so again, if we build our application now, let's check out again the common JS. And now what you see is we just have the data access model in here. So there's no trace of our data service because it's actually never imported anywhere. And so it can just be avoided. 
So as you can see, the fact of using that provided in syntax not only has other benefits in terms of having a singleton instance, even for lazy loaded modules, but it also has a direct impact on the actual final bundle size. 